more than a conqueror. He never leaves me nor forsake me since the greater one dwells within me. I can overcome every situation and every circumstance in the name of Jesus. The faith of God resides in me and through it I have the victory that overcomes the world in my life in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, that I have all these things and I believe it in my heart and I release it with my mouth this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give him glory. If you believe and receive that, come on, let's bless him. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. That we are conquerors. Hallelujah. That we are overcomers, Lord God. Hallelujah. That we live that blessed life. Hallelujah. That we live long and strong with nothing wrong in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And that we are praying the perfect will of God in our lives. Hallelujah. A victorious life in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on and confess this with me. Father, I thank you that I am renewed in the spirit of my mind and body in the name of Jesus. My hope and expectation come from you, Lord God. I daily receive manifestation of your word in my life. And I thank you, Father, right now that you are doing a good work in me and you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, that I was and am created in your image. I am capable. I am intelligent. I live the overcoming life. I live in daily expectation of abundance in my life in the name of Jesus. Every need in my life is met. I have a song mind and I live a long life because I am redeemed from the curse of the law. I walk in divine health and healing is my covenant right in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for redeeming my life from destruction and I overcome with my faith in the name of Jesus. My mind is alert. My body is strong all the days of my life and I live a life of purpose and fulfillment and I'm blessing to the kingdom of God in Jesus name. If you believe and receive that, come on, bless him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We are blessed to be a blessing. Hallelujah. We are assets to the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we praise your name, Jesus. We glorify your name, Lord. Hallelujah. We walk in daily blessings. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Everywhere our feet tread is blessed. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on and confess this with me. In the name of Jesus, I am the righteousness of God. Therefore, I am entitled to covenant kindness and covenant favor. The favor of God is among the righteous 
and I am the righteous in the name of Jesus, the Father of God, the favor of God surrounds me like a mighty shield. Therefore, it surrounds me wherever I go and in everything that I do, I expect the favor of God to be in full manifestation in my life. Never again will I be without the favor of God. I walk in it daily in the name of Jesus. It rests richly upon me. It profusely abounds in me in the name of Jesus. I am a part of the generation that is surpassingly. Therefore, favor produces supernatural increase, promotion, restoration, honor, increased assets, greater victories. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Recognition, prominence, preferential treatment, petitions granted, policies, and rules change in my favor, and all battles are won in which I do not have to fight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, glory to God. The favor of God is on me and goes before me, therefore, my life will never, ever be the same. This is the time of God's favor in my life. And that favor is the favor of God in the name of Jesus. If you believe and receive that, hallelujah. Come on, give him glory. Thank you, Father God. We thank you for your favor, Lord God. Hallelujah. That surrounds us like a shield. Thank you, Lord. That your favor is abounding. Hallelujah. That your favor precedes us. Hallelujah. Surrounds us. It's behind us. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Oh, Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God, that we are covered. Hallelujah. By your blood in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That we are divinely protected and directed by you, Lord God. Hallelujah. That we hear your voice, Father, and the voice of another. We will not follow, Lord God, but that we are new creatures in you, Father, predestined for greatness. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We glorify your name. We exalt your name. Hallelujah. Come on, give him glory in this place. Hallelujah. We exalt you, Father. Hallelujah. We praise your name. Come on, I'm going to ask you to confess this with me right now. I am a new creature predestined for greatness. I am a child of God fully accepted by the Father. He loves me and adores me, and his love towards me never runs out. I am and live in the abundance of God, and I have authority over the enemy or anything that tries to come against me or anything attached to me in the name of Jesus. I walk in abundance. I live in abundance. Abundance is God's will for me and I will not settle for less. God is on my side and I will not fear anything. Holy Spirit is my helper, and I am never, ever alone. I have the peace of God in my life. In the name of Jesus, I am blessed with all spiritual blessings, and things are happening for my good in my life as I speak it in the name of Jesus. 
I thank you, Father, that I have your wisdom and I hear your voice in Jesus' name. I am set in the body of Christ and I know that I am valuable and significant to the work of God and his plan in this earth. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Glory to God. If you believe and receive that, come on, give him glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. We are assets to the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we take hold of the great commission that God has placed in our lives and in our hands. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Come on and repeat after me. I am the redeemed of the Lord. And whatever I say, it is so. I've said it, and it is so in Jesus' name. For thine is the kingdom, so mine is the kingdom. For thine is the power, so mine is the power. For thine is the glory, so mine is the glory. And it's forever and ever in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give them glory. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Good evening. Hallelujah. Y'all go ahead and be seated. Amen. Welcome to your midweek fill up, your, our Wednesday night Bible study. All right. Hallelujah. We can get to Hallelujah. Together. We want to welcome our live streaming audience, those that are watching us via Facebook or YouTube. Welcome to your Wednesday night Bible study. Yes. All right. We say there is no distance in the realm of the spirit. But we do ask now that you start, if you're watching us at home, then you start setting your atmosphere at home to receive the word. Yes, Lord. All right, so we don't need anything in your homes going on to compete with the word right. going, cut the TVs off, you know, do all those things. Just give God some time, you know, to spend time around the word and I promise and then you will receive just like the people that sit in here tonight and to the people here tonight, thank you so much for coming out on Wednesday. Amen. Good job on praying those storms away yesterday. Yes, yes, yes. People were talking about they were predicting storms. Yeah, but we got, it, it was too close to Easter. People were still fired up. <laughs> Y'all talked to them storms and they dissipated, amen? So that just shows you that the power of agreement, I know we were speaking and pointing just like everybody else. So thank you so much. Let's get right into the word. We're gonna pray. Father, thank you for this opportunity to come and to gather around your word, Father. We thank you, Father, that you know exactly what we need, Father. So we just thank you, Lord, that you would deliver that tonight on healed ears and healed hearts, Father. So we thank you for clear understanding as the word of God goes forth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. All right, so it's a new month. Yep. New series. That's right. And we got excited about this. Yeah. Like, we're always excited, but especially when you hear something like this, what Jesus paid it all. Oh. <laughs> I don't know about you, but just even saying that gives me relief mm. and release. What? To let me know that it's nothing that I need to try to burden myself to pay because what Jesus has paid it all. Oh. Oh. Oh, Not in part. He didn't put you on after pay. <laughs> he didn't wait to see what you were going to do. He didn't know. He didn't wait to see how you were going to behave. What? Right. He who knew no sin became sin. <laughs> So I could be walk free from sin. Golly. Woo. Who knew no sin. Who knew no sin. Became sin. Became sin. So I could walk free from sin. That doesn't mean free from sin doesn't mean that I'll never see sin. It just means that sin has no dominion over me. What? So when I misstep, I have a blood bought right now to run to the throne of grace and say, Father, forgive me, and to help me. And the more I do that, the more empowered I am now to overcome the temptation of sin. But what, first, you've got to understand that you're not doing this in your own strength. A price has been paid for you. A price has been paid for me by someone, you know, we talk about he who knew no sin became sin. Mm -hmm. Think about it, and today, it's hard to get people to take accountability for what they did do wrong. Ooh. They did it and won't take accountability for it. Got cameras showing you did it. On tape. On tape. Hire legal people to try to prove you didn't do it. 
and we can see you did. So that just still, that just ministered to me. So what? He didn't have to do it. He did it in exchange or in place or in lieu of, that's what, that's God's system. He always sets a system of exchange. Uh -huh. In other words, I've already done everything you need to do. I just need you now to participate uh -huh. in this system. Have any of you right? ever heard that saying, um, you got to pay the cost to be the boss? Mm -hmm. He paid the ultimate cost, yeah. his life, yeah. all right? Got to pay the cost to be the boss. And he's not the boss because he paid the cost. He paid the cost because he's the boss. <laughs> All right? So, so you know, he, he's, he's, in the, he's in the ultimate status. So, oh, my gosh, thank God for Jesus that he paid that cost. Because yes. I'm just going to be honest with you, I probably couldn't have paid that cost for y'all. Mm -hmm. I'm just being real. You know what I mean? So, you know, if, if, if it came to my life or, you know, well, uh, let's, let's not go there, but because uh, <laughs> I love y'all, I don't want to see. I want everybody to take that the wrong way, you know. But he paid the ultimate cost, yeah, okay? Yeah. And you know, and God, God, God paid. God paid too. God gave His only begotten Son, His only Son. His son. That's a cost too. God paid a cost too, yeah. giving up His Son so that we can have everlasting life. Yeah. All right, but He paid the cost to be the boss. All right. Um, I mean, when we, when, we, when we say be the boss, you know, um, how that, how that translate, translates, um, his way is the way. Yeah. Not our way. His way is the way. Mm -hmm. His way of doing things and being right is the system that governs how life and the earth should be lived. All right? So he paid the cost, all right, to be the boss. So what, it, what, what has been paid for? All right. In, in this, I like to think of it like a benefits package. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, a, a recently a, a bank president came up to me. He said, hey, can you help me find somebody to fill a position? And I said, okay. I said, what are they paying? He said, you know, he gave me the salary they're paying. He said, be sure to let them know they're paying full benefits. Hmm. Okay, full benefits. Wow. Medical, dental, hmm. vision. Wow. Now they even got telemedicine. You can get on a video conference and talk to the doctor on the video. And now they even include things with mental health. You can get counseling and therapy on, on the video conference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Full benefits, mm -hmm. all right? Now, when God gave us full benefits in, a pack, in, the, in this package, in this full benefits package, health, wealth, joy, peace, prosperity. And what I get, what I have, I'll just read from what I got there. Yeah. Look, look, look what's in the package. Well, let's slow down because we want to know, because I can hear the questions. What exactly did he pay for? Let us know. He's been paid for. That's right. Our sins have been paid for. Yes. Okay? Meaning what? We don't have to, God's not striking at us or punishing us anymore. The ultimate punishment has already been paid. Yes. All right? Now, let me disclaimer that. We know there are consequences. If you walk out in the middle of 75, uh, Interstate 75, when a truck's coming, there's consequences. Okay? But God's not striking at us in order to punish us and teach us a lesson anymore. And really, he never was doing that in the first place. That's always been the devil. He's just been so slick with it, the devil's been able to, to steal, kill, and destroy and rob things out of people's lives and then turn around and blame it on God. And people, and, and people who don't know the Bible, who don't read the Bible, why, why God, why, why, why God? When it wasn't God, God didn't have anything to do with that. God didn't ordain that. That was the outlaw that lives in the earth. Yeah. But for our sins that we commit, that we willfully commit, past, present, and future, those sins have been paid for. The cost for that has already been paid. Say it's already been paid. Already been paid. That cost has already been paid. Mm -hmm. Okay? What else? Our health and our healing. We're going to go through the scriptures and talk about these. Okay? Our health, healing. Even things that we've done to our body, things we've put in our body that have not been healthy for our body, consequences that we have even caused, there's still healing for that. Mm -hmm. And then when you get healed, you know, you just say, go and, and sin no more. Go, you don't, we, we got freedom. We don't have to do that no more. We get healed from what, things we've caused. Now we can walk in a culture of health. Yeah. And we can get it right. We can turn it around and we can start eating right mm -hmm. and working out and exercising, and drinking water, and living right, and maintaining the health. Yeah. When we've, and, and, so, oh my God. What else is in that package? Wealth. Yeah. 
Wealth is in that package. And I don't want to get ahead of myself, but he, became, he paid the ultimate price. He became poor so that, everybody say so that, so that we can become rich. And I got scripture for it, and I'm going to show you in just a little bit, all right? Mental health. The Bible says, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. We can use God, we can use Jesus, we can think like God. We don't, have to have our, we don't have to have our own thoughts. You know, it's, it's a violation for a Christian to be like, well, you know, my thing is, you ain't got no thing. Stop thinking. Your, your, your opinions are relevant. When it, come, when it comes to the Word of God, how you feel about life and, and, and the approach to life and behavior and things like that, it's irrelevant. Because the Bible, the Bible says, let this mind be in you that's also in Christ Jesus. We can borrow the mind of Christ. And not, and not just borrow, we can take it on as our own. Yes. And we can think like Jesus, meaning this. We can, we have the, as Christian believers, remember now, this benefits package, we're the most privileged people in the earth. The Christian believer is the most privileged race in the earth. Yeah. One race. Yeah. All ethnicities, one race. Yeah. We're the most privileged in the earth. I call it Christ privilege. Mm -hmm. We're the most privileged people in the earth. Look, look at the benefits package we got on the screen. Look what we got. All these things, we're privileged. Everybody say privileged. privileged. We're, going to, we're designed to use these things. Now, what you don't want to do, when you got a full benefits package, you don't want to treat a benefits package like a buffet. And so, you know, in a benefits package, you got all the full benefits of something. In a buffet, you, people take a little something of this and a little something of that and they say, I don't want none of that. You may want some greens. You may want some macaroni. I'll pass on the yams. That's, don't, don't treat God's benefit package like you had Golden Corral. Take, a, take some of this, take some of that, but I'm going to leave that here. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll take the dying food with my sins. I may even take a little health, but, but my wealth and, and prosperity, I, I don't need that. Don't, don't be one of those Golden, don't be a Golden Corral believer. Now, if you eat at Golden Corral, that's your business. I ain't talking about you like that, all right? Come on up to Ruth Chris. All right, yeah. But don't be no well, golden. They charge you for everything. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Don't be no golden corral yeah. believer, all right? Take the full package, yeah. the full package. Yeah. What else is in there? Yeah. Stable emotions. Mm -hmm. Emotional stability. Yes. You ain't got to be tossed to and fro with your emotions. I feel this on Tuesday. I feel this on Wednesday. I feel, I feel. You don't have to be tossed to and fro with your emotions. Jesus died so that your emotions can be stable, set, fixed. Situation happens, fixed. You get to come up in a harvest, fixed. You ain't got to be emotionally, you don't have to play emotional ping pong in life. An unexpected bill come? Fixed. Fixed. Something bad happens? Fixed. Fixed. Something bad can happen, but that doesn't change my posture. Mm -hmm. God, you've always been there. <laughs> you've never left me. You've never forsaken me. I'm fixed. Mm. Mm. Joy. Yes. So that your joy may remain full. Yeah. Jesus paid the ultimate cost. Yeah. So that you can go a level beyond happiness and experience joy, which is that ultimate feeling even no matter what the circumstance is. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, happiness changes on the circumstance. Mm -hmm. Something good happens, you're happy. But if something you know, challenging happens, you're not so happy. Joy is, you can re your joy can remain full regardless of the circumstance. Yeah. All right? Righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen? And peace. peace. As a believer, every, be every Christian believer is called to peace. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall see God. Peacemakers, those that, those that, that, that usher peace. Those that use God's ways for conflict resolution and problem solving, peacemakers. All right, y'all ready to jump into the scriptures? All right, um, y'all know he died for our sins. Uh, where are we going to start? Uh, let's go to 1 Peter 2 and 24. Now, matter of fact, I'll just put that up on the screen for you guys, and then the rest of them the media department can cover. And it's up on the screen. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross. He himself bore our sins 
in his body on that cross so that we may die to sins and live for righteousness. That's freedom right there. Wow. All right? Yes. By his wounds or his stripes, you have been healed. Look at that. Not only just covering of sins, he throws the healing in there too as well. And that's healed in every area of your life. Every area. Amen. Yes, we believe in God for our physical bodies to be healed, but how many know you need your emotions healed? You need your relationships healed? You need everything about you healed so now you can function in the earth, all right? You don't need any, don't let the world tell you you've got to be broken in order to be human. Mm, come on now. No, brokenness it may be the state we were found in, but that's not the state we're going to stay in. What well, God has called us to be whole and complete, wanting or lacking for no good or beneficial thing. Wow, that's good. So don't marry brokenness. No, we're divorcing brokenness now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, yes. There's nothing broken about my life. What I'm sound, I'm whole, I'm composed. Matter of fact, let's hit that brokenness. When the, when the, when the, when the series says Jesus paid it all, he paid the entire cost, meaning there's nothing left for you to pay. Yeah. Anybody ever pick up tickets on will call? You ever had to hook up and somebody give you tickets to the game? You know what I'm talking about? And they say, man, I left your tickets over at the, at the wheel call. So we go over there and my, and my tickets, are, that means I don't have to pay to get in. Yeah. The complete cost has been paid. All right. Let's talk about that brokenness. Go to Luke 4 and 18. You can go ahead and throw that up on the screen. Uh, put that in the, um, we'll start off in the New King James. And then um, we, we'll take it uh, maybe to the Passion Translation. Luke 4, 18. Y'all familiar with this one? Okay, here we go. I'll read it from the screen. Jesus opened up the book in the, in, the, um, in the temple, reading out of the book of Isaiah, and he began to read this. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me yeah. because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty from the captives, recovery of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed go to the next verse to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord or the year of Jubilee where all things are set free go back to verse 18 and I'm going to work from the bottom and I'm going to work my way up okay the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me the anointing what does the anointing do the anointing has a purpose it is to remove burdens and destroy yokes okay so when the anointing hits those, I'm going to start from the bottom, hits those who are oppressed, <laughs> what's, the, what's the result? Liberty. Mm -hmm. They're free. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If a person's oppressed, what's the, what's the first thing, what's the biggest thing they want? Freedom. 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 Liberty. Mm -hmm. So when the anointing hits the oppressed person, what's the result? Liberty. Yeah. Now, when the anointing hits the blind person, mm -hmm. what's, the, what's, the, what's the number one thing a blind person wants? recovery of sight so when the anointing hits the blind we get recovery of sight all right let's keep going when a when a person's held captive they're in jail or, or, or they're, they're 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 in bondage in some sort of way and they're held captive when the anointing hits the captive what happens liberty freedom they're set free let's keep going we talked about the broken and the brokenhearted we got the broken heart. When the anointing hits the broken hearted, look, look at the scripture says, he has sent me to heal the broken hearted. So when the anointing hits the broken heart, your heart's been broke. Maybe daddy broke your heart since when you were a little boy, a little girl. Daddy maybe never, never been around. Maybe some, somebody else, maybe mama, it might have been mama. mama. Maybe mama disappointed you. Maybe, maybe a spouse left you in, 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 a, in a certain condition and, and disappointed you. But when you're broken hearted and the anointing hits the broken hearted, what happens? You get healing. All right, let's keep going. Mm -hmm. The poor. What's the, what's the number one thing the poor want? Financial freedom. So when the... You mean not love? No. Humility? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. When, when, when the poor are on the street begging, they're not begging for love. Sir, sir, you got, you got, you got a piece of humility in your pocket? 
ma'am, ma'am, can you help me out? Can you help me out? You got a piece of love in your pocket? They're not asking for that, are they? What they asking for? Finance. What EPB answer for? Finance. Money. What the water company asking for? Finance. What so the more, what God the has you here. He knows you have need of all of these things. You have need of these. These are basic needs. Yeah. Why wouldn't God meet your needs? All right. So when the anointing hits the poor, what happens? What happens? The good news or the gospel is preached. And what's the good news? You ain't got to be poor no more. Everybody say full benefits. Full benefits. There's a full benefits package yeah. in what Jesus paid. <laughs> All right? So, so don't treat it like no don't be no golden, don't treat it like golden corral. Yeah. Take everything. Take it all. He paid it all. Take it all. It's God's will for you to take the entire package. Don't tear pages out of your Bible. You see a, a, a scripture on prosperity, don't rip that out and pretend like it's pretend like it's not there. Take it all. He paid it all. Take the full package. All right? You got, you got anything you want? We, we, I'm doing all right? Doing good. All right. Well, let's Because I was about to go on the rabbit trail. You about to go on the rabbit trail? You know, singles, when you dating, that's, that's important to ask. Well, what kind of benefits you got? Oh, wow. There you go. <laughs> well, these, these are questions we need to talk about. Mm -hmm. If I'm about to give up my name for your name... Mm. What, I got to put you on my insurance? Mm. What well, conversations need to be had. But as believers, well, you have a right to ask ev about everything God has done for you. Well, so you can know of assurance. So when these things show up, you can say, wait a minute, that's a part of my benefit package. Mm -hmm. See, I know as a tither, I have rights and privileges that other people don't have. So when lack tries to show up, well, I tap my benefit package. That's good. What do I do? I take action. I sow. I give. What am I doing? I'm stepping into God's system of exchange mm -hmm. that he's made available for me now to tap my benefit package. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go so we can get into scripture. All right. Um, so we covered sins. Y'all saw that in 2 Peter where he, where he bore his sins he bore our sins in his body on the cross. We saw that, right? Mm -hmm. we, uh, health, uh, Isaiah 53, basically says, um, by his stripes we're healed. Isaiah what? Isaiah 53 and 5. Um, we don't have to go there, but we, it's, let's put it up. Okay, let's put it take up. A, okay. Take a picture of it. Go ahead and put that up in the New King James, please. Isaiah 53 yeah. and 5. You know, I had to remind myself what pollen doesn't have authority over me. We sure don't. No. I know you're tired of me making that noise. Ooh. I can't even. I can't even recreate that noise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Y'all know what's funny? My dog does it. Mocha. <laughs> She's been around me so much. <laughs> like, Sorry. But what? That's not cute in public. Mm -hmm. well, so Polly doesn't have authority over me. Polly, you got a job, and it ain't to bother me. So go do your work. That's do right. what you're supposed to do. And leave you alone. And leave me alone. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Full agreement. Healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, my Amen. grandmother, I love it. She said something. Um, my grandmother, she said, when do they talk about storms and things? She said, no. Storms, no. God, you promised us rain, day, night, snow. You did not give us storms. And that has stuck with me. So now every time I hear about that, I said, right, that's, storms are not a part of our benefit package. Anything coming to kill, steal, destroy, and tear up property that God is giving you, that ain't from God. No. You remember when we were getting in the bed last night, and I said, I pray it do nothing. Yep. You know what I mean? And it practically didn't do nothing. You know, then I woke up this morning, and the weatherman said, the storms broke up mm -hmm. as they were coming into the area. Hallelujah. Some believers praying, wasn't yes. it? We ain't got time to get our stuff all messed up and ripped up and blown you know, away and stuff like that. Anybody got time for that? And we pray for the other people that, that those things happen. Yeah. And we know that they can, but what, when everybody gets on one mind, one accord, mm -hmm. things begin to shift. 
So imagine if we did that with everything. 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 Them financial storms breaking, breaking up. Breaking up. Woo. Dissipating. Yes. Hallelujah. Ailments, hurts. Mm. Breaking up. Breaking up. Everything in your body functioning in perfection according to its design. Yes. Well, God didn't put you here to have high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. So what? You take authority. Start drinking some water. Saying your confessions. Amen. Amen. All right, here we go. Isaiah 53 and 5 in New King James. But he, look, he paid the ultimate price, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. He took the chastisement or the punishment for our peace. That's on him. And by his stripes, he's healed. No. By his stripes, we're healed. That's the ultimate price. Y'all take a picture of that if you need to. All right? That chastisement, what that means is take the suffering away. Yes, the suffering. Torment. Mm -hmm. Well, all of us should be having sweet sleep. Yes. Nothing disturbing our sleep. Amen. Well, that's already been taken care of. That's part of our benefit package. Mm, mm, mm. All right. What else is in this benefit package? Uh, wealth. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. And go ahead and put that up on the, uh, the New King James. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. It's up there. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, everybody say that he was rich, <laughs> that though he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, For whose sake? He became poor so that you, through his poverty, might become rich. And somebody might be saying there, see there, I told you Jesus was poor. That's not talking about financially. Because we read other scriptures, we know he wasn't poor. We know he had a place to live. We read John. But look where it chapter, starts. Mm -hmm. It said that he was already rich. Yes. So how do we take that out and just make him start from being poor? Mm, come on. He letting you know he was already rich. See, when you connected to God, mm -hmm. you the wealthiest thing. Yes, he could say whatever he needed. What? So he was already rich. I love how they clarified that. Well, he was already rich. And he became poor. For whose sake? So that you become what? Rich. So if you make, so this is the only scripture in the Bible that talks about Jesus being poor. So if you're going to make him poor, then you got to read, you got to finish the whole thing. So he, if he became poor, so that through his poverty, we might become rich. And what that meaning is, okay, think about it. He's already on the throne in heaven where there's mansion upon a mansion upon a mansion, <laughs> streets of gold. He's already in heaven. He's got to come now down to the earth for our sinning behinds. Coming off that throne and coming into the flesh, that's what be made him poor. He became poor in relation to what he was already experiencing on the throne. Okay? Mm -hmm. Got to read the whole interpretation. You got to get back into the Greek and the Hebrew. And you can't just read the, the American Bible and, 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 and from a Western culture point of view. All right? You got you to have the full understanding of it. So that through his poverty, his coming down and having to get in a body and experience the things in the body that we have to experience, that he didn't have to experience up there on the throne. Mm -hmm. He, through that poverty, he, 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 he did all that so that you can become rich. All right. Amen. So that should destroy any poverty mindset. Yes. What? So now you got to check your life. What is anything in my life that's speaking poverty to me? To poverty to me, I must uproot and disconnect from that. Mm -hmm. You know, laying in bed when you know you got to go to work. That's a poverty spirit driving you to sleep. Mm. You know, anything uh, charging up a bunch of debt. That's a poverty spirit. What, and you have to disconnect. There's voices that try to keep you 
around your life or try to shame you for wanting a better life. Mm. How many know you have to disconnect? Well, me wanting a better life, that's just because I know what's in my benefits package. And I know who's responsible for bettering my life. So when you see, you know, those little, you know, mm, that's, that's a cute little house. Little? I don't care if it's 400 square foot, if God gave it to you. What? Don't let people be condescending in your progress. Why? Because none of us have arrived. We're all on this journey. But in my journey, I'm going to shout where I am. <laughs> Well, because God gave it to me. So I'm excited about whatever God has done for me. Amen. Amen. Flip that in the Passion Translation. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. Go ahead and put that up in the Passion Translation, the TPT. And let's read it from there. All right. For you have experienced the extravagant grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that although he was infinitely rich, say infinitely rich, infinitely. that although he was infinitely rich, he impoverished himself for our sake so that by his poverty we could become rich beyond measure. That's a mic drop. That's Bible study. <laughs> That's a mic drop. That's Bible study. Shut that's, it down off the, that, on that right it. there. That's Bible study. Rich beyond measure? Beyond measure. Meaning they can't measure your richness. Yes. And we're not just yeah. preaching about things. Yes. We're talking about a total life transformation. Mm -hmm. This is not just about having your bank accounts full. This is not just about to be out here showboating. And no, it's so when you're, when you're rich, you just impact everyone that you come around. Well, everything about you gets, everything of people come around you, well, their lives come up. Well, because of your richness and because of, you know, how you treat people. See, the Bible talks, there's a difference between wealth and riches. But don't disconnect from them. You want them both. You want to be the kind of person that what people are attracted to you, not for what you got, mm -hmm. but they just know they feel bigger when they walk away from you. Mm -hmm. Well, you're making an impact. You can't impact people when you need a lot of help. Mm -hmm. But when you're in position to help, you can impact everybody that you come in contact with. And they start to ask questions, well, how and what and what, and then you get to tell them about Jesus. And start from it. Look, and I can hear this. Don't stop looking at things that didn't work out as failure. They may not have worked out, but that's not the end of the chapter. It's just a part of the book. So you get to testify. So you don't have to be shameful because something didn't work out or a relationship didn't work out or this didn't. No, no, no. What? That's just a small part of the book. So we're going to keep turning these pages with God. So what? He can make us rich beyond measure in every area of our lives. Amen. So we're excited about this series. We just kicked it off tonight. We'll pick up the rest of it next week. We'll pick up the rest of it next week. Whew. That was just the surface of what we're about to... That's rich right there, this That's series. That's rich, rich, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, Amen. so thank you so much for coming out tonight. Amen. If there's anyone here today under the sound of my voice here in the sanctuary or if you're watching us on streaming TV and you would like to, you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, or if you want to rededicate and recommit your life to Christ, if you want to be filled with the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit, you can, you can tell we're not just regular church-going Christians, all right? We believe everything that the Bible says. We believe in the supernatural power that's to be following every Christian believer who, who claims the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Miracles, signs, and wonders, getting supernatural, supernatural power being displayed on your life. Others witnessing the supernatural power in your life. If you want that kind of supernatural power, then you need to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay? And you, you need to go beyond just getting being saved. You need to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And we, and we, and we, can, we can do that here tonight. And also, too, if you want to receive NUMA as your church home, we'd love to have you 
or your entire family come grow with us, all right? So if all of your five, four powerful life-changing invitations, you're watching us on streaming TV, contact us on our website at numa.org, call our church office, the number's on the website, or come visit us here in person at Numa Church. Anybody here in the sanctuary, you have need of that, any one of those, anybody got a need and want to have that need met tonight, we can take care of business, we can stand on business tonight. Yeah. <laughs> anybody here want to take care of that business? You have a need in one of those areas? Or even if you just want prayer in an area? We have, prayer, we, have, we, have, we have foundation pastors here that can, that can minister to you in any area that you may be having a challenge in. Is anybody here today? Free, Jesus paid the cost. This is freely given. Yeah, free. There's no cost for this. Any takers? Amen. All right. Contact us, all right? Amen. All Hallelujah. Right. Now, it is opportunity for prosperity. Amen. Amen. What does that mean? Now it's time to give a way to make your exchanges in exchange for what's already been done for you. All right, so if you need an offering envelope, just raise your hand, the ushers will serve you. Um, if you need to give online, it's numa.org. Or you can text to give at 423-800-8856. Or dollar sign Numa Church on Cash App. I love to tell people what they're giving to, you are expanding the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Not a man's agenda, but vision that God has given. Mm -hmm. And that makes me so excited about expanding the things of God, um, sowing in the kingdom, reaching more people for Jesus, building more debt-free buildings, mm -hmm. all of the things impacting our community, being able to give and sow and to reach out and just do more things to bring Jesus to the center of our lives. Amen. All right, so when you're giving, sowing, don't forget to water your seed. We had our first Super Sower Sunday. Mm -hmm. I mean, the testimonies, I'm already seeing things. People, things are breaking loose, breaking free already. Debt cancellations are happening. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh, God is still a debt canceling God. Yeah. You know, and I, that just thrills me, that excites me that those things are happening. Healings are taking place supernaturally. All kinds of things are, are happening, all right? So, our wow women, are you ready for May 11th? You wanna give towards that? You can mark your gifts accordingly as well. Wow, May, Saturday, May 11th, that's our big hat brunch. That's where we will have Pastor Carol Jones will be in the building. We're just going to have an awesome time. We should be getting some things out to you this week so you can start inviting people, get their tickets, and all of those things. Amen. When, did anybody catch the podcast today? Yes. Wasn't it rich? Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. So um, don't, um, don't forget the Hope for Today with Dr. RJ podcast every Wednesday um, at 12 noon on Facebook Live, YouTube Live, and Twitter. I think I heard him announce that he's going to do a Thursday night, right? Yes. Okay. Next Thursday night? Is that the 11th? Yes. April 11th. He said between 7 and 7.30, he let us know, but he's going to come in your homes in the evenings. All right. Next this, Thursday night. This Saturday, Keys to Canaan. Yeah. We back and we ain't playing, all Ooh. right? So uh, this Saturday, uh, the first Saturday of April, uh, 12 noon, um, you know, uh, come on out about one hour, and uh, we're going to um, talk about, you know, finance, life skills, and some things that can really, 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 truly, truly, truly help you out in your personal financial uh, uh, package. Amen? Amen. All right. Y'all ready to give? All right. Yes. Go ahead and stand to your feet. Present your tithe and your offering, Father. We thank you for this opportunity you, that you've chosen us in this generation, yes. Father, to make the difference in the earth and in, this, in the world that we're in, Father. Yes. So we thank you, Lord, for making us a light to all that we come in contact with, Father. Let your light be the brightest things in our lives, Father. Yes, Jesus. As we make you the center of our lives, Father, thank you, Father. it's because of you that we move, breathe, and have our very being, Father. Yes. So we thank you for all the goodness that you've bestowed upon us, Father, so that we may be good to everyone that we come in contact with, Father. Hallelujah. So we thank you in advance for all the good that's being bestowed on our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's make our confessions, all right? 
Let's look the confession up in the Greek. It says to say the same thing. Let's say the same thing God says about us, all right? Repeat after me. Father God. Father God. Thank you for. We thank you for. Another opportunity. Another opportunity. To take part. To take part. In your tithing. In your tithing. And giving system. And giving system. I do so willingly. I do so willingly. And wholeheartedly. And wholeheartedly. As the peace of God. As the peace of God. Rules. Rules. Reigns. Reigns. And governs. And governs. My response. My response. To this opportunity. To this opportunity. I thank you. I thank you. That wealth. That wealth. And riches. And riches. Are in my house. Are in my house. My descendants. My descendants. Will be prosperous. Will be prosperous. And influential. And influential. In their generation. In their generation. Making them successful. Making them successful. In all that you call them to and do. All that you call them to do. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. For empowering us. For empowering us. And training us. And training us. So that you can trust us. That you can trust us. With all the increase. With all the increase. That comes to our lives. That comes to our lives. We will be mindful. We will be mindful. To give you. To give you. And you alone. And you alone. All the glory. All the glory. And honor. And honor. And praise. And praise. For all the good. For all the good. You have bestowed. That you have bestowed. Upon our lives. Upon our lives. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Fathers, we leave this building, but never your presence. We thank you for the angels that stand guard over our lives, shielding and protecting us from all hurt, harm, and danger. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Be blessed.